Dwarves wear mithril and gold, not ceramics and plastic. And that's why I'm repainting all the leagues of Votan leagues, but with metallics. And today it's the Greater Turian League. So here is sprayed black and I'm going to start with dry brushing silver all over the armor. And I'm dry brushing rather than just applying a base layer because I like the rough look, but also because it's so much faster. If you follow along with this tutorial, it's really beginner friendly, easy techniques and pretty quickly with only a handful of paints. You'll have a whole army of these guys ready in no time. But first the armor, the backpack, anything that's metal, so also the gun and the crest, we'll just do everything with a quick dry brush of silver. There, quick and easy dry brush all over the armor, the ax, the gun, the crest, the backpack, all of it is now dry brushed with silver and it's time for the next one. And I'm going for the green of the cloth and I'm going very bright with Sibarite green. And as you can see here, it's a very green, almost teal uh, looking paint. And it's way too bright for the finished product, but that's fine. Uh, the thing is I'm using this very light paint right now. So that after that, all I really need to do is wash it and I don't need to highlight it after. It will save me a huge step in highlighting or edge highlighting. And this way I'm saving a lot of time and I get the rough look that I'm looking for because I want this to look rough too. I want them to look like they've been in combat. Like these are kind of simple grimdark style like most of my videos. And then it's time for scrag brown for the leathery parts. And after that, a little bit of black, but first scrag brown for everything around the belt, everything that he has hanging there, the pouches, his water bottle, um, just not the grenade and not the gun, but the holster definitely. And after that, well, almost all the colors will be blocked in. And this is really how I prefer to paint. I don't like working on one piece of the model and then finishing it completely and then moving to the next part. I prefer to block in all the colors because now if I feel like the green isn't looking right, I can easily paint over it before spending a lot of time on it or spending a lot of time on other parts of the model. I also work quite rough with a lot of dry brushing. So it's good to get the bases right and then quickly wash or dry brush to highlight. So like I said, scrag brown for the leathery parts and then we'll do the blacks on the patches, his knee patches and his boots and gloves. With the belt done, it's time for the boots, his knee pads and the patches on the elbows and the gloves. And the Great Tuturian League has them all black. I'm gonna make them gray first and then see how far I want to shade them because I feel it can have a little bit more color. So here I'm using Skaven Blight Dinge, which is a sort of medium tone gray. It's a little bit darker than your standard Mechanicus gray, but it's a good base. And either I'm gonna shade this with uh, blue first, like a Dragon of Nightshade, and then non oil, or I'm just going straight black. I just have to see how well this covers and I have to see how well those washes look. By the way, I've already painted the trans Hyperion Alliance with orange and black and it's kind of like Kronos Hegemony with yellow and greenish bluish in there. Those two are already on my channel. And after this, I'm gonna keep going with the other leagues. But first, let's continue with this Greater Turian League. Now take a look. Uh, everything is pretty much blocked in. I uh, got the belt, I got the pants, the shoes, the weapons, the armor, all of it. Everything except for the weapon handle and the skin on the face. Now the reason I'm doing those two last is because I'm going to wash and then I might go highlight and dry brush and I might hit these parts again. And there's just no point in keeping cleaning them up and trying to paint the base layer again. I just leave those to the end, especially the skin because I want to use a bit of contrast paint because that's just the easiest way to paint skin for me. First, we're gonna do some shading and I'm going to use Dragon of Nightshade for this. And with the Dragon of Nightshade, I'm going over the pants that are supposed to be greenish and over those gray patches that I painted and the boots. And with the blue, it will dry really dark. So the gray might turn into black. And if it doesn't, I'll go over it with non-oil. And I hope the green will kind of get less bright and it will, settle into that color that the Great Arturian League has. And without the need to highlight again, this can really save a lot of time. If you're painting like 30 of these miniatures, if you're also going for all the other stuff, it can save you a lot of time if you don't need to highlight again. And then the belt gets a layer of Agrax Earthshade to also give it a bit of shading. And again, the Scrag Brown is pretty light, so we might not even have to do highlights after this. Of course, you can do that on stuff like characters or vehicles, models you want to spend a bit more time on, but hey, this is a battle line choice and 
even though he might be the sergeant, the squad leader of the dwarves, I don't think you would want to spend a lot of time on perfecting this little mini. Uh, so Agrax Earthshade on the belt and then non-oil all over the silver. And once all of this is done, the mini is pretty much soaked in, in washes. So it's time to let it dry for a bit. So if you're, let's say, painting in an evening, try to get this step done with all your minis and then just put them away, let them dry overnight or whatever. And the next time you come back, all your washes are dry and you can continue with the next steps. The washes have dried, and so let's take a look at what the result is, because I'm actually quite happy with how it looks now. As you can see, the armor is a little less shiny and a little bit more dirty because of the non-oil. And I'm particularly happy with how the pants and these patches turned out to be. As I said when I was putting it on, the blue dries up really dark and it turns something gray into almost black with a slight blue tint, which makes it much more interesting than just pure black. I said I might have to wash it with non-oil and I don't think I need to. This is good enough. The belt as well with the Agrax Earthshade, I think it all looks good enough. And if this wasn't a sergeant type model, if this was just basic baseline troop, I might just leave it here, finish the skin and move on to the next model. But let's spend a little bit more time on him. First of all, dwarves don't just wear mithril, they wear gold as well. So here's some retributor armor. And I'm just going to start picking out details on the mini. So first up, this crest over here. But I'm also thinking of adding a little bit more to just the torso. I'm, I'm not 100% sure what would look cool. Maybe something on the shoulder pad. Maybe one of the shoulder pads gold. But I just want to signify importance for this little mini. He's just a little rank above the rest of his squad and it should show. And if I can add a little bit of gold in here, then I can use that gold for characters and for vehicles. And the higher you get in the hierarchy, the more gold the miniature will have. And that way you can tell a little bit of story about your army. Like the, the guys who are ranking higher wear more brass, or in this case, gold. So I'm just going to continue here and I am going to give it a try. Let's see what happens. I can just paint this shoulder gold but make it look a bit rough so I'm not going to cover it completely and make it look like it might have been damaged as well so it's a little bit streaky it's not completely covering the shoulder pad I think that looks okay let's try now the front here and I'm not going to paint that big part gold I know that already so let's just paint this part over here and again I'm doing a bit of a streaky motion so that it doesn't cover completely and it looks a little bit rough and I think this is okay. You know, this looks nice. He has a, let's say a golden stripe. Let's see this part here and turn him in a bit of a bumblebee with black and gold stripes, but in his case, mithril and gold. So, so far so good. I'm just gonna continue, uh, figure out what I wanna paint gold. Maybe a little bit on the gun as well, a little bit on the ax, just little hints here and there showing his wealth and showing his status in the squad. Okay, let's take a look at all the gold that I've added because I uh, kept going quite a bit because like I said, this guy deserves a little bit more gold. As you can see, I took the shoulder pad, the crest that he has, little details on the axe, his chest. I also took that little bulb over there. Now that's a, a light or a camera or something like that. And I'm going to use technical paints over them to make them look like lights. But it's a good idea to paint them gold first or silver if you want something brighter. I'm going for gold because I want something warmer. And then I also did the other shoulder and a little bit on the gun. Just to signify that he is a bit wealthier and a bit more important than the rest of his squad. Now it's time to paint the weapon handle. And I'm going to use uh, Word Bearer's Red for this. And this is a dark red. That is a great contrast with the green of the pants and the bright metallics. And this is just a little detail on this mini, but it is great to have this as an additional color on bigger stuff like the vehicles or on characters like the cloaks and so on, if you want to do those in a different color. Because if you have this color on your base minis, even if it's just a little bit like this, and you put it on a character unit or something bigger, it will unify the army. Uh, it will mean that you don't have models in your army that have a color that other models just don't have. And this unification process, it's great to make the whole army look more coherent and more complete. 
Okay, we're barely red on a weapon. Now it's time to improve the gold a little bit more. And the only thing I really want to do is highlight it a bit and wash it a little bit. And I'm going to wash it with some Reitland Flesh Shade. And it's a red wash. And I'm not going to wash everything, just the parts that actually have some detail in them. So this head here on the crest is going to get a little wash. But I'm not going to put it all over the shoulder pad because it's flat. There is nothing there for the uh, shade to get into. So these little bits here on the weapon, they get a little shading. And I think this will be, I don't know, it might look good, it might not, but it might look good because you have multiple tones of gold on your mini, which is interesting. It might not look good because suddenly you have multiple tones of gold and it's just weird to have multiple tones of gold, but we'll see. I'm just going to shade everything except for the two shoulder pads and see how that works out. And if it's nothing, well, then can always go shade it anyway. I shaded it anyway. It looked weird on the Mini without the shade because it looked like I just forgot to paint that part of the Mini. And in real life it might be cool to have different tones of gold and make it all look slightly different, but <laughs> on a Mini it just looked like I forgot the piece. Now the only thing left to do is to shade the weapon handle with some non oil and it will make the red even darker. So if you want something brighter, start with a brighter red, it's something like Evil Sun Scarlet instead of the word bearer's red. But I like this, it uh, is really muted. I think it's a good contrast against the shiny metals that he has everywhere. And then what's left to do is the skin. And I'm going to do that the same way that I did the Trans Hyperion Alliance and the Cronus Hegemony. I'm gonna start with some grays, make it white, and then add contrast paints. And of course, you need to paint his mustache as well. And I want the skin white. And always when you paint white, start with a gray first. So this is Celestra gray. And this is pretty much the lightest gray you can find that still covers relatively well. Uh, I've tried many other grays, but they are either just too light and the black base layer will shine through, or they are actually pretty dark gray and you still have to cover them after that with lighter versions. And the reason I'm starting with gray is that white just does not cover. It's just not the pigments in there that can cover black uh, base paint. And you could do this differently by just keeping the head separately, spraying it separately with a white base color instead of the black primer that I used. But I like to paint my minis when they are fully assembled, especially when they're this small. You know, bigger stuff like characters or greater demons or whatever, I'll paint in sub assemblies, but it's just not worth the time to me to do it with these minis. So I'll do ashen gray now, and that's really only needs one layer. And after that, a couple of layers of white to really get him white. So after a couple layers of gray and a couple of layers of white, finally the base is sort of smooth enough to apply some contrast paint. So I'm gonna use some Gilliman Fresh and go all over his face. And I'm also going to go over his mustache and his beard because I'll cover that with a darker contrast uh, paint later on. And it's just easier to go over everything and then cover up later than trying to only hit the skin because you might miss a piece and then there's a little bit of white sticking out you have to come back with your contrast paint and this just saves you a lot of time and then for his beard i'll use some contrast wild wood to make it a nice dark brown now for some dirt grime and blood and gore of course now often i use streaking grime or other enamel washes to make the minis look really dusty and dirty and worn but I'll keep it simple with these guys because I want to use paints that even beginners can use and also paints that are just very easy to work with. So I'm sticking with Games Workshop stuff. So I'm going to use Skaven Blight Dinge and this is the same gray that I used before on the knee pads and the boots. And I'm just going to dry brush this lightly on his boots and his pants. And I'm going for an upwards motion because that will make it look kind of like he's been kicking up dust and dirt while walking around. And then I will use the texture paste on the base, Astro Granite Debris, which is also great. So that will tie it all together and make it look like he's been walking through the dirt for a while. With his boots dusty, it's time for some blood. And since he has an axe, I'm gonna make use of that. So here I've got some blood for the Blood God and I'm just gonna make streaks in the direction that the axe would be swinging and try to get some blood spatter on there. And I know it's a power axe, so blood would cook off, but I don't care, this looks cooler. And I'm not good at painting power weapons, so this way I still have something that draws the attention to the weapon. A little bit of blood spattered there on the armor. On this side, 
let's say he hacks into something, this side is going to get a little bit of blood. Maybe a bit in his face too. Why not? And after basing him with some astro granite debris and non-oil, this is what he looks like. And he can take the ranks with the other leagues. I think I stick close enough to the Greater Turian League, but with metals. You get your silver, you get your gold, you can claim it's mithril. It looks more like a dwarf than the plastics and ceramics that you see in the Games Workshop paint scheme. And that's what I wanted to achieve. If you enjoyed this video, check out the trans Hyperion Alliance or the Cronus Hegemony. Or subscribe for the next upcoming league. Let's see which one that will be.